Thank you, Jesus. You know, it's so nice and such a wonderful experience to experience the presence of God and people, yeah. people that love one another, okay? There's so much love in this church. If some of you people out there are watching, you need to come to church as soon as you can and get a dose of it, okay? Amen. You'll love it. You'll love it, amen? Yes, Praise God. Yes, sir. I remember, uh, I remember the first day I walked in this church. I had no idea what God was going to do. Now you see what God's doing. He took somebody. I didn't have much time to live. And the pastor prayed for me, and I believed it. And I went to the doctor. said, there's nothing to treat. I can't, you know, that just that blew me away. You know, sometimes when God does something and you get a miracle, well, there's another one too I'll tell you in a second, but it just, it just, it changes you. It changes you. I want to, I stop right here, and I want to thank you, Pastor Melba, and uh, your husband, our preacher, our pastor, uh, for allowing me to uh, be here tonight and speak. Um, I just want to stop for a moment, and I want to just worship and, and praise God right now. Amen. I want to thank you, Lord, for this church. I, I thank you, God, for what you're doing. I thank you for the ministries that are coming out of this body of Christ. I thank you for the people who are coming in and receiving miracles and, and signs and wonders and everything that you said in your word, God, is coming to pass. We thank you, Father, for it. We thank you. We pray for Pastor Philip right now. We ask you, both whoever's with them, we ask you to protect them. The angels of God to encamp around them. The word of God to go forth from them. For your spirit, God, to touch people, and they will see miracles. They will see salvation. They will see things, and, and they will bless God. And I ask you to bless them and take care of them and bring them back home safe. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You know what? God wants you to know that your words have power. Your words have power. Now, this, let me, you know, we, we went through this winter, right? Okay? And... At my house, you know, when, when we purchased the house, uh, every house that's in that neighborhood has a tree, okay? And uh, the winter came and all that. When I first saw this tree, I saw maybe a few leaves, and it was basically sticks. There was no budding like some of the other trees in the neighborhood, you know? But my whole block, the, all their trees are dead. They're still dead both sides of, of where I live. And, and I looked at that tree, and I was really upset about that. I wanted to call and complain about it, that they need to replace that tree because that was part of the, you know, purchase. I don't want to walk in my house and find something dying. I don't like bushes that die, and I don't like to look at them. I mean, I can die in Christ. I'm alive, but in my flesh, I'm dead. Okay, but a tree that's, that's supposed to have all these nice leaves and all, like the rest of the neighborhood, uh, mine, mine was dead. It, it was even to the point to where I went to the tree and I started breaking off some of the branches and they were just dead. And it stayed dead. And then God told me, he said, you know what, son? You remember when I, God talking to you. You remember when I cursed that fig tree? He said, if you'll speak to that tree and tell it that you're going to live in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you're going to start budding, you're going to do whatever you, to tell it, you're going to live and you're not going to die, and I command that in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Yes. And about two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I saw... And I'm, t I'm telling you, my neighbors next to me across the street over here, over there, over there, their trees are dead. They're all dead. Come on. And mine starts budding. <laughs> and the next thing I know over the last four days, all these beautiful small leaves are all over it. Every stick is full of leaves and it's living. Come on. And I'm going, wow, man, God, you know I didn't like looking at that dead tree and, and you brought it back to life. And I <laughs> He said, well, you have power and authority in your words. So I have a live tree, and I got a picture of it before and after, and I'll show it to you if you ever want to look at it, okay? 
but the rest of the trees are dead. That's what's, that's what's so amazing. That tells me something, you know, yeah. how God really cares about even the little things in our heart. He can see those things in our heart. It's in our heart. We battle with the mind a lot, but the heart's what believes. That's what Jesus said. I could see it in their heart, you know. He sees our heart. So when we're going through warfare in the mind, we try to cast down every imagination and thought that exalts itself against God because the enemy's always trying to come in and drag you away from what God's trying to do. He's always fighting all the time. He's like a nagging whatever you want to call it. I don't know what it is, you know. But that's what's going on. But this wasn't my, my, this wasn't my sermon, okay? I just, I'm just trying to get warmed up. No, I'm just kidding. I'm all right, okay? I feel, like I'm, I feel like I'm here, but then I feel like I'm not here. And I keep saying, well, what is this? And God said, because you're emptying yourself. He says, you remember when I emptied myself? I laid everything aside. And I walked as a man, and he didn't use, he, 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 emptied, he emptied himself of all the things that, you know, that's about all I can tell you on that one. But he did. And he said, you're emptying yourself. You're emptying yourself so that I could continue to fill you and then I can walk in you. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. There's nothing that God wants to do. It's not going to stop him from doing it. I can tell you right now because he knows your heart. Okay, so here's one other thing. We look at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. I've been, wor- I've been watching God touch my wife, my wife Lisa here, and uh, she's been getting miracles and getting stronger. And, and uh, yeah, amen, amen. Glory to God. And, uh, and, and God did, you know, God works through, doctors and you know physicians and things like that i had so much back pain over the last week or two and i could i couldn't sleep i mean this back pain was hard it was bad i couldn't it was just amazing uh <laughs> terrible stuff um but anyhow i did go to i had i had surgery uh the day before yesterday right lisa they went in there and they did all that stuff in my back right and it hurt so bad oh my gosh man I didn't get any anesthesia or nothing. I just took it like a woman giving birth naturally, you know? And I just hung on to that. I'm like, this is going to be cold. This is going to be cold. You're going to feel some freezing. I said, okay. And they told me at the end, they told me at the end, you, do, you did better than people that get uh, sedated. And I said, well, okay, that's all right. That's Jesus, anyhow. So, Yesterday, I, was, I, I said, how am I going to preach, Pastor Mel? How am I going to preach? I'm so, I believe, didn't I, Lisa? I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. God, please help me. Please help me. This morning, I wake up, and I can't. There's no pain. Okay? No pain. I got and, and And I just thank God that he can, he can do a miracle in our lives any way he wants. That's the thing. Don't put God in a box. Okay, don't put God in a box. Just let him do what he needs to do. Amen? Okay. Well, I better get started, huh? <laughs> um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to be preaching on uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ. And uh, there is so much going on in this world right now that I can't, I can't keep up with it. I'm trying to sort it out right now. But God gave me two two callings, to preach the gospel to the whole world and to preach the knowledge and the prophecy of his second coming to the world. I can't hold that back anymore. And I can't do it without the Spirit of God. And I can't do it without other people's help. But God told me way back in 1973 when he saved me, he gave me a calling in my car. And he said, son, I've called you to bring the, preach the gospel to the world, and I've called you to bring the knowledge of prophecy to the world. It's been a long time since I've looked at what's going on in the world. There's been a lot of things that are happening, but when he told me that at that time, I said, How, how's that going to happen? Because we didn't have the technology like we have today. The technology we have today, people right now that could be watching, they're watching overseas. 
I have people that are scattered around different states that are watching right now. They're on Twitter, and we talk to each other. We have, we have space. Anybody know what the space rooms are and, and on Twitter? They're rooms like a chat room, and you can pick any subject. You can talk, uh, you can talk about the Word. You can talk about anything you want, and, and we put up these Christian space rooms we, we take that. There's no limit on time or nothing, and we share the Bible, and we pray together, and we worship together online on Twitter. Thank you, Twitter, uh, for allowing us to do that, okay? Because a lot of uh, platforms don't want you to do that, okay? So that's how God's going to use people like us that he calls to preach the gospel to the whole world. Now, the thing that he's concerned about also is his, the knowledge of the prophecy of his second coming to the world because he wants, he doesn't want his church to be in darkness and not understand what's going on. He wants them to see. He said, these things have been written that you might believe. When they come to pass, you will know. And there's so many things that are coming to pass about his coming and the rapture. By the way, I can't, I got to tell you just like it is. I am pre-tribulation rapture. Before the tribulation, we're going out. We're not trying to escape. We're just fulfilling God's word, and we want to be with Jesus Christ, and we're going to come back with all the saints to this earth. It's not crazy. The natural man receiveth not the things of God, neither knows them, because they're spiritually discerned. That's the natural man. The natural man's in his sin. He hasn't been born again yet. But when he is born again and he becomes a new creation in Christ Jesus, and as the time goes by and he reads his word and et cetera, et cetera, he gets divine revelation that comes from God himself. It's absolutely a miracle that God could talk to us, but he did that in the Garden of Eden, didn't he? He talked to Adam. He talked to Eve. He walked with them in the cool of the night, okay? He had communication. God, this isn't just about uh, a book about mankind and his, his issues and stuff. This right here, this book, is a divine revelation of who God is. And God has brought us into his church, into his kingdom, and he teaches us who he is. And you could be sitting there, and God could speak to you. He'll show you all kinds of different things, but that's the Holy Spirit of God, God himself, talking to you. So when you read the scriptures, he gives you divine revelation and understanding of what's going on. Amen. So, I, Jesus, you know, he's talking to his disciples and he's trying to teach them some great truth. All, all, every time Jesus was teaching or preaching, the disciples had a question. And so one of the questions that, that, that the disciples had, he, they wanted to know when he was going to come back and, and when the world's going to end, okay? So if you go to Luke chapter, let's go to uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 25 for a second. Luke chapter 21, verse 25. It's also in, in Matthew chapter 24, which I was reading, and there's a lot of stuff going on in Matthew 24. Let me tell you something. But Luke 21, starting at verse 25. And God says, God says this, okay? His disciples had this question. When are you coming back? When's, what is the world going to be like? Now, We've had over 2,000 years go by, over 2,000 years. And let me say this too. The Bible, there's a revelation of who God is. He said, holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. All scripture is inspired of God. Hear that? All scripture is inspired of God and is profitable for doctrine, for correction, etc., for the man to be furnished in every good work. But it's inspired. It's, it, when you see prophecy fulfilled, your faith starts to build even more, okay? And so Jesus is talking to him, and he says, listen, guys, here's what's going on. Luke chapter 1, verse 25, and he says this, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man 
coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, that begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And then he spoke to them a parable. He spoke to the fig tree. But anyhow, he said, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is nigh at hand. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, when you see them come to pass, listen, when you see them come to pass, he says, no, let me find myself. Let me find myself. Okay, up here. Here we go. I lost it. I could actually, I can quote this without the Bible. I'd do better. But anyhow, I'll just read it. I'm serious. And then shall they see the Son of Man come in, in, in a cloud with power, great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. He spoke to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer is night at hand. So likewise, ye, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass away. This is heaven and earth will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Now, if heaven and earth passes away, this Bible is going to go with it. So what God's saying is my words shall not pass away, because I'm eternal, and I am the Word. That's what he's saying. I am the Word. I'm, I'm eternal life. I'll never pass away. And that's what he's saying. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Okay. So, they had this question. Now, it says in uh, this verse, uh, verse uh, 25, it says, And there shall be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing for fear, looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of, uh, the, the power of heaven shall be shaken, the powers. Okay, right here in verse 25, it says, there will be on the earth distress and perplexity. Distress means to be pressed in upon every side, okay? And perplexity means no way out. So the things that are going to be taking place on the earth is going to cause men's, it's going to get to them so bad that their hearts are going to fail them for fear for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, okay? So that's what he's saying. It also says in, in uh, Matthew 25, it talks about the days of Noah, right? What, what, was, what was the problem with the days of Noah? Well, I know if I look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, which is, he's saying when he comes back, it's going to be like the days of Noah, right? Okay, Genesis 6, verse, verse 5, let me look at this real quick, and I'll tell you what's going on. Uh, Genesis 6, verse 35. I know sometimes it takes a minute to get to that. Okay. Okay, Genesis 6, verse 5. Here it is right here. Okay. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And continually, that's right. That's how our hearts were. I mean, we didn't have to be, you know, doing a bunch of stuff out here in the, in the world, in the community, but that's the way our heart was. But these people were given over to an evil, evil heart, okay? And that was in the days of Noah. So, it actually, God was grieved that he even made man, okay? But, boy, he sure loves us, right? Amen. He goes across to die for our sins, buried and resurrected after being crucified. And, and as he, before he went and ascended up to heaven, he's walking around. 
with people, talking to his disciples and all that, and then, <laughs> he went up in the clouds, right? So it was evil continually in Genesis, okay? So um, what was happening back there in Genesis is you have Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? Sodom and Gomorrah was given over to pleasure. That's what they did. They pleasure. And they, they had, how do I say this, Lord? Uh, thank you, Holy Ghost. The angel of God and another angel went to see Lot, who lived in Sodom. God was going to destroy that place because of the wickedness that was going on. It's not like they were playing around in caves and writing pictures on stuff. I mean, this stuff is, is pretty bad, okay? And so, uh, Lot was, he was, going to, he, he was going to receive salvation, and, and the angels were going to deliver them from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so, these two angels which looked like men, Two angels are on their way to talk to Lot, and they get up to Lot's house, and, and Lot invites them in, and they, they're talking and all this, and the next thing you know, something's going on. The people, all the people from uh, the city, they start coming into the area where Lot lived, and they start banging on the doors. Hey, who are those men? Who are those men? Show us who those men are, and they kept saying that, and then they said, we want to know those men. Do you know what that is? Adam and Eve knew each other. Adam and Eve knew God. They were doing practices that were bad. Lot has the door open. They're, co they're wanting to come in, and he says, no, 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 don't do this to these two men, okay? Okay. Don't do this to this to, I'll give you my daughters. Can you imagine doing that? Give up my daughters? Oh, we don't want your daughters. We want these men. And the angel slammed the door. And the angel struck all them blind. And they couldn't see or do anything. And that slot was telling him, you need, uh, God was telling him, you need to get out of that place. Because God's going to judge it and God's going to destroy it for its immorality and everything else that's going on. I'm not trying to put anybody down, but I'm going to tell you right now, in our, in our state, in the United States of America, there is sin that's going on, and it's not the right lifestyle. Most, I'm going to say this to most people that you got, you got, most people, most people in this situation, as they're growing up, something happens to them, and it, it starts to change their mind. But I'm going to tell you something. I really believe that most people that are in these lifestyles have been taught about that. They grew up with that. There's all kinds of things that cause them to, to uh, come together. And it, Look at Romans, okay? Romans chapter 2. Look at Romans chapter 2. I'll, t I'll just tell you what God says about it. And this is what was going on back then in the Old Testament, and then this is what's going on now because God connects as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be. So Romans chapter 2, and I'll look at that real quick. Okay, help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. X Romans. And so this is what, what God's trying to, trying to get them to understand about his coming. No man knows the day or hour, but he says, I can give you a few cl uh, clues. I can, I can give you a few signs of my coming, but nobody knows the day or hour. And, and Jesus is saying, if anybody tells you that they know the day or hour of my return, don't you believe him because there's only one person who really knows for sure, and that's God the Father, and he hasn't told anybody yet, so don't you believe him. You read the scriptures and watch. I just listened to somebody, or I started to on the way here, that he's got the date and time set, and he says he seems to have proof that the rapture is going to take place in this year. Well, I don't know if it's going to happen this year, but I know it can happen at any minute. I know that. But yet still, I want to work for Jesus Christ. We want to work for Jesus Christ. We want to be leading people to Christ, and, and we're bringing people in because he's coming back. We don't want them to be lost. 
Just like the pastor says, if you have to go through the tribulation and give your life to Jesus Christ, okay, you could do it now because you're still safe. You know what I'm saying? But if you wait and, and you see what happens and we're gone and then you realize that you were told the truth and you're going to receive Christ, you got to live with him and walk with him during the tribulation, you will probably be persecuted, beat up, maybe killed, or cut your head off. That's about the way it's going to be. And I'll get to Israel in a minute, but that's what's, you know what I'm saying. Okay. So Romans chapter 2, actually, uh, let me, let me, let, let me do uh, one real quick. Okay, let me see if I get this right. Is it one or two? Okay. I'm using a different Bible tonight. I apologize. Okay. Um, uh, like, okay, here, here. Oh, boy, that's something else, Lord. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, chapter 1. Um, let's just go at 20, 21. Chapter 1, 21. And they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Talking about creation. They became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the un uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and to creeping things. Wherefore, God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own, through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves." who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For God, for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, and men with men working that which is unseemingly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was met. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, Man, maglity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despisers, desp <laughs> uh, haters of God, despiteful, proud, <coughs> boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient unto parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So all I have to say is that area of life in our country and around the world, you just heard what God said, and God will save you. He's not, he's not, he's, he has a love that he can draw you out of that, and you can receive salvation through Jesus Christ. There's nothing that can stop that. He'll save you. But we have that going on in our country today. I'm not mad at, I'm not, listen, I'm not mad at gay people, okay? I'll just tell you right there. I worked with a lot of gay people, especially when I flew for the airlines. There's a lot of good people, but I'm telling you right now, it, the lifestyle, it's not, it's not of God. That's not God. I can't lie to you. I have to tell you the truth, and I have to tell you that God loves you enough to save you. Just like, just like I was an alcoholic and a, a drug addict, Amen. and God saved me. Right. Well, sin is sin. That's it. <laughs> sin is sin. But Jesus Christ will save you and he'll forgive you. Okay. So this is something that's happening right now. It's happening in our world. You know that. They got marches and everything else. Okay. So... Uh, let me get into something real quick. Here's another sign right now. Israel. Israel was born a nation in one day in 1948. It was born a nation in 1948, okay? And 
You, uh, actually, let's look at Isaiah 66. See, I've, been, I've just been starting to get into this stuff, so, I mean, yeah, there's so much out there, I don't know where to begin, but this is what I'm doing. I'm looking at things. I'm looking at simple things that you can see that you can't deny. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's stuff in there that is so mind-blowing. I could, yeah, I, I could tell you some things that I don't know. Does anybody in here understand uh, equal distance letter sequencing? See, that's what I thought. <laughs> I don't either, really. But it's a pattern that you can follow in the scriptures. And there's actually, there's actually messages embedded in this word that are, they're not, they're, they're in the word, but you have to have this spiritual, the blessing of that to interpret it, okay? I'm just telling you, that I, one of these days, I'm going to bring this chart. I got to build it up, bring it in here. And I'm going to take, this is reversing books, and I'm going, to, I'm going to put all that together. I'm going to show how it's done. I'm going to take one letter, and I'm going to go through that thing, and it's going to draw something for you. It'll blow your mind. I've seen some of these uh, where it actually has missiles embedded in God's Word. It has missiles and, and, and things like that. And on some of those missiles, it says USA. Some of those missiles had a pig head stuck on the end of the, of the missile. There's all kinds of things. There's going to be something happening in this country. I don't know what it is, but when you find it in God's Word and God reveals it to you, you don't see it yet, but there's a possibility. That's what I'm saying right now. These nations are talking about nuking. Okay. We got, a new, we got enough power on this planet to blow this planet up 500 times. Yeah. Yeah. And if it wasn't for Jesus Christ coming back for the elect, no flesh would be saved. We would destroy ourselves. Right. Right. But God's going to stop that. It's all, it's all centered in on uh, Israel right now. What's going on with Israel? Yeah, what's going on with Israel? Okay. Isaiah, uh, what did I say? Isaiah... Uh, yeah, 66, thank you. Uh, Isaiah 66, okay. Bear with me. Eight, Isaiah 66, eight. <laughs> Isaiah was written a long time before Jesus came on the scene, okay? Listen to this, Isaiah 66, eight. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. God birthed a nation. That nation was Israel. In one day, nation, uh, Israel had become a nation, okay? It was born a nation in 1948, May the 14th. No, now, let me just read this to you real quick. Uh, Thus saith the Lord. Now, he gives a prophecy in Ezekiel 37, 21 through 22. You can look at it sometime, but God's talking about Gog and Magog and how he's going to draw them and all this stuff. Okay? There's not, there's not good, uh, and they're talking about two nations, okay? No more two nations, According to the word, God has one nation, not two. And Biden's talking about making Israel a two-state nation. No, no, it's not going to happen because God said it's not going to happen. He's not going to allow it. Okay, so you can keep your eye on that too. They talk about that. It's not going to happen. Okay, now... After being uh, away from their homeland for almost 2,000 years, I got here, the Jews were given a nation, a national homeland in Palestine on May 14, 1948. Great Britain withdrew her mandate, and immediately Israel was declared a sovereign state, and her growth import, uh, importance among the nations became also astonishing. So you got this, this piece of land that the Jews are on coming in. They, it make, God makes it one nation, and he prospers them, and the, the rest of the world is just amazed at what's going on there. 
I mean, they got deserts with uh, fruit and vegetables and everything. They are blessed. Israel's blessed. And God said, I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse those that curse you. Now, what God has written, that's what's going to happen. I don't care what you see or what they try to do, okay? That's what's going to happen. It's, that's the bottom line, okay? So now what really gets me is I'm just going to go off with it. I'm not tired of the notes, but let me tell you. Okay, listen. All eyes are on Israel right now. What did they do? Honest to God, what did they do, people? They didn't start declaring war, going all over the world, killing people. They didn't. There's two, there's two proofs that God's real, okay? And the devil wants to wipe it out. Number one, he wants to wipe out the Israel state. He, he wants to wipe them all out. Every Jew, that, and he wants to wipe out the Bible and the Christian. And if he can do that, then he won, but he can't. He can't wipe it out, okay? You hear what I'm saying? You, you're, it does, listen, God's given Israel victory, okay? There's a lot of Jews that are born again, completed Jews right now. And then you got Jews that are, that they're not born again. They're traditional, you know, Old Testament and stuff like that. But God says, all Israel shall be saved, okay? It also says that God's going to pour his spirit out on Israel. Also, Israel's the main center for the tribulation. It's against them. It's against the Jewish people. And this is what made me so mad is Hamas attacked them. What Hamas did was so wicked and evil, shooting and killing people all over the place, okay, cutting babies' heads off, burning them, torturing them, and all this stuff. That's what they were doing. They flew in on kites. I saw that, okay? I, I saw them walking around. They went to the pot of porty pots or whatever those things are. And, and they're just shooting right through the thing, making sure everybody's dead in there. They, this, they, okay, Israel has a right to defend itself, okay? And we stand for Israel defending itself. They don't need no, uh, what is it when they stop shooting? They want to cease fire we, so they can get it together some more? Forget it. They ought to keep fighting. If something happened to us in Oklahoma City, and they came flying in on kites and stuff and started shooting us all up. Do you think this country would stand by and go, well, you know? No. We would protect our state. If we were the state of Israel, we would protect our state. We would fight for it. And then now the whole, the whole world, starting in our blessed country, that and God we trust, and Christian colleges and universities and churches and people and believers all over the place. And we didn't have all the stuff we have today, the immorality and the murders. Murders and murders and murders and thefts, carjackings, everything you can think of, beating people up on the subways in New York. The violence, the violence and, and going through stores and grabbing and running things and, and all this stuff they're doing. This is wicked and this is evil. This is a lack of the, the, even the... The mayors or whatever states they are don't back up the law enforcement. They want to cut it down, cut it down. I, they're purposely trying to destroy our country from within. That's what's happening. We got all the, hey, I'm, I'm all for a migrant that goes in the right way. And we're, our, our, ta, our, our city, our state is trying to pass laws that if, if you're in here and whatever, well, Lisa knows better than I do on this, but we're not going to let all these influxes of people into our state, okay? That's it. We'll help them or do whatever we got to do. I, I don't have that news clip. I had it, but I, I'm not going to go to it right now. But we're going to do something about this, and, and we got, we've got to pray for this country because we need some governmental change. We need to get back to what we were having, and I'm not telling you who to vote for, but you know, one day that trumpet's going to blow, okay? And so, if you hear that trumpet blowing in your life, uh, do something about it, okay? Because, hey, oh, by the way, let me talk about Trump for a minute, okay? <laughs> uh, listen, that man, I've never seen a man like that in my life 
that can take the persecution that he's going through. And all he did, wanted to do is make America great again. Okay? I mean, it's the truth. He has a relationship with God. And he is, he's a powerhouse. He knows what he's doing. So that, that's all I can tell you about that. We need some change. Amen. But what's happening is they're trying to bring our country down to where we're not as powerful as we are anymore. They could control us and, and this and that, okay? That's what they're trying to do. So I'll leave that at that. I'm just going to leave that at that. But... Israel should do everything they can to defeat the enemy. That's it. That's it. Okay. Do it. Do it. Okay. So let me, uh, here's another sign. Let me, uh, let me find this. We need to go to, uh, real quick, let's go to, uh, uh, let me see here. <laughs> Where did I see that? Okay. Uh, I did say, oh, let's go. Yeah, sorry. I'm trying. I'm trying to find some. God, give me some more strength, okay? Please, okay. Let's go to Matthew 20. Where does Matthew 24? No. Oh God, Lord help. Let me just tell you, okay. <laughs> yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, where is it? Let's let's just go. Let's just go to Revelation 18. Let's go there. This is different for me tonight. This is different because I, this is God's way of trying to get me into the knowledge and prophecy of his second coming, okay? I mean, all this word's in me, okay? All this word's in me, and, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to pull it together, you know? In the last days, perilous times shall come for, livers, uh, uh, for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, okay? The time will come when they, men will not endure sound doctrine or, or the church, they won't endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn their ears away from the truth and they'll be turned into fables, Okay? And all this stuff is going into me, and so God's got to sort it out and put it out, okay? That's how he's got to do it. So let's go to Revelation 13. This is going to be happening in our generation of 12. Where is it? Uh, it's about the sorcery. 12, 12, let me see. Revelation 18. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Oh, well, God takes in perfect people sometimes and just humbles them down real good. See, son, I told you. No. Revelation 18. I told my wife, I said, I need to get this stuff together, but, I, you know, sometimes you're just studying, you got papers all over the place, and you're trying to figure it out, and you're going, oh, my gosh, what a, here's another piece of paper over here, and I'm like, oh, Lord, help me. Okay, so uh, Revelation 18 21 through 24. Let's go there. Revelation 18. And I'm using another Bible that I don't have. It's not marked. So that's uh, 21 through 24. 18, 21. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Uh, this is talking about... Um, this is talking about... Uh, uh, now let me see here. This is this is the judgment that's going to happen. Okay, oh, we'll go back to let's take let's take sixteen. Start reading, see what it says. Okay, and saying, "Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, in one hour, so great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster all." The company and ships and sailors, as many as trade by sea, stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? They cast dust on their heads, cried. They were weeping. They were wailing, saying, Alas, that great city wherein we were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. In one hour she'd made desolate in one hour. 
Rejoice over her, thou heavens, ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Okay? And it goes on here. It says, in verse uh, 22, And the voice of the harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. This Something's going to happen that's going to cause this to happen. Actually, it's going to be destroyed. And no craftsman whatsoever crafty is shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all at us. They will be gone. For, for by thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries, by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. So this is going to be happening when, when, when the rapture takes place, we're gone. They're going to slaughter Christians. They're going to slaughter Christians. They're going to, and this is a lot of it has to do with Israel in their own country, okay? But here's how they were deceived. It says, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. The word sorcery, you get the word sorcery. The Greek word for sorcery is pharmakia. That's the Greek word, pharmakia. Uh, so you're going to have witchcraft tied into pharmakia. And wouldn't you say that when you look at our world today that we got a problem with pharmakia, drugs? We got all the fentanyl that, that Russia is allowing China to send all this in. Our borders are open. Have you ever seen somebody overdose from fentanyl? It's horrible, okay? In fact, I carry a little thing. If I ever see somebody, I'm going to run in there and do it. I'm going to tell them about Jesus when I resurrect them, okay? <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you right now. Say, God gave you a chance. You better take it right now. We'll, we'll, we'll take you to our men's home, and we'll really help you, okay? Forget this, okay? So anyhow, so sorcery. The nations of the world would be deceived by sorcery. Let me tell you something. Anybody that's hooked on fentanyl or anything else, they're, they're deceived. You know why? Because number one, poor things, they're, they're hooked. They're, they're grabbed into a bondage they can't get out. The only way that I could get out of the bondage I was in and the only way my wife could get out of the bondage and the only way my daughter could get out of the bondage and the only way my son could get out of the bondage because our whole family, folks, was split up. My wife went this way. My kids went that way. I'm by myself with my dog and I'm hurting inside, and I'm reading a letter that my wife wrote and left it behind. It broke my heart, but God told her she had to go because if she didn't go where she was supposed to go, she was going to die in our house. And here's another miracle. She almost did die in the house because somebody else decided they were going to give her a little shot of something, and when I came home from work and I'm in my flight uniform and I walk in and my wife's laying on the floor and I'm checking her and I don't hear no breathing, I don't feel no heartbeat, and I just froze. And I mean, I could do CPR, I can use a defibrillator and all that stuff on people. But because of these drugs deceiving our lives and the devil using it to take everything we have and destroy our lives, which he's nothing but a thief, that comes to steal, kill, destroy. Amen. Jesus Christ said, I'll give you life abundantly, right? Amen. Okay, so hallelujah, man, give him praise, huh? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So I walk in and my wife's dead on the floor. I don't know if she just died. I didn't know what happened. Uh, I froze. I couldn't do anything. I called 911. When I, before I called her, I said, Christina, come over here to, the, to my bedroom. Lisa needs, she, I need to do CPR on her, and I got to talk to 911, please. She says, I don't know how to do it. I said, you get in here, and I'll tell you how to do it, okay? So she comes in. I'm talking to 911, saying, I, I don't know what happened. My wife, we're giving her CPR, and Christina's doing that and giving her a couple of breaths and stuff like that, okay? And the ambulance got there, and when the ambulance got there and they saw me, I said, I think... I, th I think uh, she OD'd on a heroin or something. I don't know if it was a mixture or not. But, and, and she'd already taken medications before that. So when this dude did that, I was, I won't, 
it's hard to talk to. I'm just going to tell you like it is, okay? The imps uh, told me to get out of the room. I've never had that happen before. I guess what they did, they didn't want me to see what was going on. Anyhow, make a long story short, they brought her back to life, okay? Praise God. Amen, Lisa. She's got the scars to show you, believe me, in her heart and other places she's got them, okay? But she's, she's alive, okay? So, and that's the power of God. I mean, here we are today. This is what God's done. He took a family that was totally shattered, brought them back together. And there's people that are believing God. For, you want your families put back together, and God can do it for you, okay? You and your household shall be saved. That's what happened to my household. We all came together. God saved my whole family. And, and guess what? It was my time to take back what's rightfully mine. So now that I'm on this, this place and what I'm doing right now, okay, let me stop here, and I'm going to read you something right here. And I know Christ is coming, and I know the rapture is going to take place. I know it is. But let me read, because this, this, God's leading me by his spirit right now to do what I'm doing right now, okay? I'm going to read a prophecy to you. I'm taking back what's rightfully mine. That's what I'm doing. That's what God said I had to do. That's why he said, talk to that tree and command it to live and use my name, and I'll show you you have power and authority in your words. And I did, and that's amazing, a beautiful tree. So I believe we had power in our words. But he just wanted to, you know, it's like, it's like coming up to Charles and going, hey, Charles, here's a bouquet of flowers for you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Father. You know, Amen. not a dead thing, you know, just alive. Okay. So anyhow, Kim Clement, I don't know if anybody knows Kim Clement here. He did go to be with the Lord. Amen. But he pulled me out of it. This is when Lisa was diagnosed with MS. Okay. Here's another thing we're believing God for healing. Okay. She got diagnosed with MS on her birthday. Can you imagine that? On her birthday in the hospital, okay, she tells me to go to church and hear this prophet, and I didn't want to hear him because he had long hair, and I thought he was just an entertainer. That's all. <laughs> Kim Clement, she says, yeah, I want you to go to church. I, I want you to see him. I said, honey, I don't care about him. I don't know who he is. I don't really like him. You ever been in a position where you found out you didn't like something and you were being judgmental and then God had to show you that what you were doing was wrong and you find out that's one of the best people you've ever met, full of God's love and spirit and all that, but you had something going on in your spirit is trying to keep you away from, from the truth. That's what the enemy does. He try, let me tell you something. If something happens to you in this church or somebody says the wrong thing or you can't get all the communication that you want, don't think it's because that person doesn't love you, okay? They're real, okay? The enemy, well, I, I'm, I know I'm on another thing, but the enemy will try to take you out of the place where God puts you. Amen. And God, um, for us, God put us here. I know he did. He healed us. He's blessed us. This is one of the best fellowships that I have ever been in in my life. Thank you, Lord. The best, the best, the best. And I know that God's going to bless this church. He's got, the people are going to come in because people are hurting out there. They're hurting, okay? So let me read you this prophecy. God said that Kim Clement called me out because I looked around. He said, the man... The man clapping his hands with the suit and the tie, about 1,500 or so people in the church, and the lights are dim. And I'm minding my own business. I'm over here, and here's the orchestra over here. And Kim Clements comes walking out like this, you know, and he, and he sits down, and he starts playing right off the bat. It hadn't been 10 minutes. We were worshiping God. And so, anyhow, I'm clapping my hands. I got my tie on. All. Next thing I know, he stops right there. He looks over there, and he points right at me. I didn't know he was pointing at me. I thought he was pointing at somebody else, but he was pointing at me. And, and the reason why, he, on the way to see Kim Clement, that my wife told me to leave her in the hospital, which I didn't want to do, and go hear Kim Clement, and I took one of my daughters with me. And on the way to church, this is why I believe God can answer your prayers in your heart sometimes, even without speaking it. God knows it. It's time for uh, an answer to prayer, and he just does it. It's a miracle, okay? It's a miracle, that God can do something 
It's a miracle. It blows your mind when God gives you a word on the way somewhere and then all of a sudden when you get into the body of Christ and the anointing, God gives it to you in the church, okay? That's a good way of communication. That's the best communication in the world. That's all I got to say. That's it. Amen? So I said, God, if this man's really a modern day prophet, like you say, if he's really a prophet, but he's a modern day prophet because we live in the year... 2023, 2024, 2022. If he's real, have him say something to me out of the word. You know, I thought he'd be up here preaching, you know, and, and God would speak to me, you know, uh, something out of the word, not call me out. I didn't, I didn't plan on that at all, okay? And so, you know, so I'm worshiping God, and all of a sudden he says, let me read it to you. God said, I'm putting... He said, the gentleman clapping his hands with a suit and a tie, God said, I'm putting you back on the road again. And I'm like, there's nobody behind me with a suit and a tie. And I'm standing there. He says, I'm, 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 I'm putting you back on the road again, okay? I mean, literally, God said, literally, I'm putting you back on the road again. God said, I'm going to put your feet steadily at the right place at the right time, and the time is now. Then he says something. Don't you dare look back. This is him prophesying this to me. He don't know me. Don't you dare look back. He said, the failures are over. God said, listen, there are people that have failed you. There are people that have said yes and then done no. And I'm going to stop right here and say, God, I forgive all those people that failed me and told me they were going to do something and they didn't. God, I forgive them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. That's the first time I said that. And this, this prophecy was in, uh, I think it was uh, 06, 2006. So this first time I asked God to forgive me and I forgive them. You see how God works? It took all that time for me to, okay. Uh, said yes and then no. But God said, I'm putting your feet steadily back on the paths again. And you will hear laughter and you will hear joy because I sure wasn't hearing it. Okay. You will give it back. So God's telling me I'm going to give the joy. I'm going to give the joy and the happiness. I'm going to give it back. Okay. You'll give it back and you will look ahead and say, I am now ready to once again take what is rightfully mine, okay? For the Lord said, restoration is beginning tonight. And God said, a deliverance of one will take place before your eyes, very eyes, and then on two, on one, and then on two, before your eyes, it'll happen. And you will say, God I never dreamed that I would be back in this place. You said it, God. God said a double portion is coming to you. Don't you walk away. Let's not walk away from what God shows us to do, okay? We don't have time for that. We have to get serious with our walk with Jesus Christ and obey him and do what he tells us to do. And he will bless us. He'll forgive us. He'll do anything for us. He can move mountains in your life. He can move everything. He can bring everything together. He'll bring it to order. That's what he does in your life, okay? He said, a double portion coming. Don't you walk away. God said, begin to run because as you run, so the wind and the rain shall come to you and your house, says the spirit of the living God. And I heard that. Give God praise, man. That's the truth. No lie. That came from the prophet, okay? And my daughter pulls me. She said, Dad, did you tell him all that stuff about us? I said, I don't even know who he is. Yeah, yeah. In this church, you will receive prophecies just like I did. God's going to speak to you. There's things that God's going to supernaturally show you, okay? That's what he's going to do. But... I started to believe this, and I was amazed that it happened because, man, it was out of my control, brother, out of my control. And uh, it was a long one, too. And uh, 
This is what I use sometimes to fight the enemy. When he says, you know what, it's over for you. I said, no, it's not. God said, God said, God said. Well, you know, yeah, God said. Did God really say that? Yes, Lord, you did say it, and I believe it. Huh? Oh, yeah. Well, we'll see. I know how to push your buttons. Oh, yeah? Just try it. Man, let me tell you something, too. And it's gotten worse right now, but I know I'm off track and all that, but I'm just going to go with it anyhow. Listen, let me tell you, let me tell you this. In the end times, in the last days, there's going to be false prophets and teachers. I got the scriptures. There's also the knowledge and travel will vastly increase. The book of Daniel talks about that. It's, it's happening now. I mean, we, we, we're not even using NASA. We can go to space, but they're trying to do that too, okay? There's that knowledge of travels going on. The sorcery, which I, I told you about. The two witnesses, here's another one. I'll just quote this to you because I know I got to close up. Okay, in Revelation, it talks about two witnesses that are going to be preaching during that time. They're prophets, two witnesses. They'll be able to preach. They'll be able to stop the rain. They'll be able to do this. They'll be able to do these miracles. And they won't be able to kill them. But in three and a half years, they will be able to kill them. They slay them, and they lay in the streets, which is called Sodom and Egypt, where our Lord was crucified. But here's the interesting thing about it. The whole world's watching this, just like we're watching Israel right now and all these things going on. The whole world's watching it. And they see these prophets, and when they get killed, the Bible says that when they get killed and they don't even permit their bodies to be buried, okay, three and a half years, they start rejoicing, and they start sending each other gifts or whatever they're doing. The whole world watching on satellite, watching on their phones, iPads, whatever, they're all watching this amazing thing about these prophets because there's no church there. We got raptured out, so this is blowing their mind because they're all in the system now, and they're rejoicing over this. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God enters their bodies, and they get resurrected right out. They get raptured out. They're gone, okay? That's, that's what happens in the book of... But the Bible says that the whole world will see their dead bodies lying in the streets of Sodom and Egypt. The whole world. I knew that in 1973, and I said, how could that happen? But today I can tell you it happens through our uh, communication, the way we have the satellites. and the, the, That's it. That's Revelation. That's what it says. That's another thing that's going to happen. The mark of the beast is another thing that's going to happen. The Antichrist wants to unify the whole body into one thing, one world government, one world religion, one world currency, you know? I was thinking about this yesterday when I told Lisa. I said, the money, you won't be able to buy, sell, or eat unless you receive the mark of the beast. Guess what? We're not going to be here to put up with it. So right. let them get put up with it, right? Amen. Yeah. They're going to have to have this mark or they won't be able to buy, sell, or eat. Now, they could, do, they could actually do that. I mean, they got stuff going on right now, uh, but it's not at the point where you can't buy, sell, or eat. But they are, you know, it's uh, algorithms and all that stuff, what you like, this and that, you buy anything on the Internet, you know. But what's going to happen is they'll get, they'll get rid of the American currency. Hey, they have to. And I don't know when that's going to happen, but if it'll go digital or crypto or whatever, it's going to go on. But something that really made me sad that if they get rid of the currency, we got another change that they don't want. They don't want to know about God. They don't want to know about it. They don't like that. Those spirits get angry, rebellious. I'd like to cast a few out, though. But anyhow, <laughs> here's the thing. When we lose our money, it goes to something digital or in the system, okay? It's not going to say in God we trust on it. There will be no God we trust. There'll be in God, the God that we've made, the beast and all that. That's where that's going to go. See, it's still on our, our money in God we trust and our coins. But once we lose that, there's no in God we trust, see? And I was thinking about that yesterday, it just came in my head. So those two witnesses in the mark of the beast. And let me read. Let's, I'll read uh, 
2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, and then I'm going to close on this. I, I want to pray for somebody um, and anybody that, but here's, here's what I'm trying to say. If you're serious, if, if you're serious about walking with Christ and you know he's, he's coming back and you want to make that commitment, I'm going to ask you to make that commitment tonight. Um, but 2 Timothy, uh, uh, let's see, let me get to it. Second Timothy three, one through five. And this is the way it's going to be. For this, he, uh, t- uh, Paul's writing to a young pastor, and he's trying to tell him what it's going to be like and what's going on even then. Beware of this. For know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and wholly unthankful, natural reflection. On and on it goes, traitors, heedy, high-minded lovers of pleasure, more in loving of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Turn away. And it it goes on. But that's a a picture of what's going on today in our world. People are so self-centered, a lot of them. And selfish. They're backbiters. They're haters of God. One last example. One day when I was out ministering and, and doing evangelism, I was in a parking lot, and this lady, you know, I had my Bible t- t- uh, tracks and stuff. I was passing them out, and, and it was in front of that all natural food uh, store off I 240 in Penn or West or something like that. It's a health food store. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there, so I'm talking to them, passing out tracks. And I'm talking to these, just talking to these two ladies, and this lady comes out of her car, and she runs right up to me, and she goes, you leave those ladies alone. You don't need to be talking to them about anything. And I said, wait a second, what? I said, I'm trying to tell them about Jesus Christ. You don't have any right to do that, and you, you're not going to do it. And I said, listen, I don't know who you think you are, but I am going to tell them. I'm not trying to do anything wrong. I'm trying to tell about Jesus Christ. You know, and she's just vehemently mad at me in my face. And she, you know what she said to me? She says, I know how to push your buttons. I said, oh, really? You do, huh? Well, you know what? You're evil and you're wicked and you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. And she keeps, she keeps yelling, walking into the store. And I said, you need the devil cast it out of you, okay? And I just... It just whatever was coming to me, I didn't care. But for her to come in my face like that, and I've had that done before, you know, man, I mean, my, see what happens? You know, God says, you know, come out in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. hallelujah. Listen, anyhow, bakasite, huh? I know God's good. I know there's a lot of things going on in this world, and you know too, but it's, it can be overwhelming at all times. But listen, I'm going to tell you, we're okay. We got a, we got a job to do, and God's going to keep teaching us his word. He's going to teach us his word. Uh, we'll keep moving on with the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're going to see a lot of prophecy take place, okay? We're going to know, and we've got to be looking up. Lift up your heads, your redemption draw nigh. Jesus, Jesus, the same Jesus at the tomb, the angels were talking to, you know, Mary and things. He said, look, this same Jesus, angels, the same Jesus that ascended up to heaven will come back in like manner. He's coming back. I'm telling you, he's coming back. And I want you to be ready for him to come back, okay? He loves you, you know? If, if you're not serious uh, about giving your life to Jesus by surrendering it, and then, you, look, any of you online, listen, you don't have to give up nothing to come to Jesus Christ. You come to Jesus Christ just the way you are. Just the way you are. That's it. Then... Then, then he'll start showing you how your life's going to change, and that's how you progress, see? I didn't have to give up nothing. 
but God did tell me the next day to throw away my pot. So, you know, I met Jesus in my car. He came right in my car. I had a, such an experience with the Lord. He, he said, I'm, he took me from being stoned to straight in a split second. I'm like, what, what, what happened? It's beautiful. I felt so love, joy, and peace. All the burdens on my shoulders disappeared. Every, every insecurity, everything disappeared. I was a very insecure person. I didn't like to talk in front of people. Huh? So then I know it didn't either, I guess. I don't know what happened. But anyhow, God's fantastic. This, this, uh, why don't we stand for a minute? I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring, uh, God gave me an assignment tonight. So what I gotta do is I have to, I wanna, I wanna get, I wanna follow the assignment because this is important, okay? Just like me, you know, God can heal a person instantly and then God can heal a person in progression. God can heal somebody any way they want. So that brother, you back there, come on up here and, and get me a couple people. Uh, because he's fighting a battle and this is the last part of the battle he's got to fight, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. He had cancer in like 60 days to live or something. And we were praying and God touched him and healed him. And he's got the paperwork to show. I looked at it and everything's shrinking up. And the doctors are going, what? Yeah, and that's what's happened. That's what happened to me. When Pastor Philip prayed for me, he said, I command that to stop in its place. It stopped right there. It did. And I'm alive and it's been over two years, okay? No treatment. This man is gonna be totally healed too. He's not gonna die from cancer. God's not, wills, that's not God's will. God wants to totally heal him. So I want you to raise your hands right now and we're gonna put that where it's supposed to be. You ready? Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I thank you for your healing power. I thank you for his, your healing power that's flowing into his body and driving that cancer, shrinking all of those tumors and things that he has in there, shrinking him and making him whole because of the life that's in the blood. And right now, God, I ask you to give him that transplant so his blood is clean in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Karasada. Yeah, Karabasada. Keisha, take it, take it, brother. Take it, take it, take it. It's all right. It's all right. Just do it. Lay it. Get on that table. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, who has a stomach condition? Anybody got a stomach condition where you get pain in your stomach all the time? Anybody? Down the aisle? Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, stomach cancer. Huh? And, uh, lymphoma. Yeah. yeah. Okay. See? Mm -hmm. Stand. There you go. What's his name? Okay. Y'all, y'all pray in the spirit, okay? Because God brought her all the way from Georgia, right? And she's gonna stand in the gap for somebody that has stomach cancer, uh -huh. and now it's spread to the lymph nodes, and we're gonna believe God and thank God for healing that person. She's gonna stand in the gap. And what's his name again? Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to you right now. Greg Elder that has been diagnosed with stomach cancer and, and cancer, Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on her in faith. In the name of Jesus, I speak to Greg. Greg, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we curse that cancer in the name of Jesus. We command it to stop in Jesus' name. You'll progress no more. God, I thank you for healing him by, the, by your name, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your healing power, your healing power. Thank you for anointing her too, Father, in the name of Jesus, to do what she has to do. In the name of Jesus, Give her that anointing, God, that healing power in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good report, folks. That's how we do it. Amen. Yeah. 
Let me ask a question here. You, you, your husband. He was my husband uh, for 32 okay. years. Yeah, it's okay. See, see what God's doing? Praise God. Okay. All right. Okay. We, he's, yeah, Ricky. Okay. It'll be okay. Thank you, Jesus. You need a little blessing? Yes, I do. Watch her, man. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for touching her. I thank you for the anointing. In Jesus' name, by the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, amen. Go Sunday, Sikarabakata. You just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. She knows. She knows, Lord. Let her drink it. Let her drink it in the name of Jesus. That peace and that authority and power that she receives. In the name of Jesus, I touch her hands, God. I thank you for the anointing that she has on her life. I give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Is, is there anybody here that doesn't know for sure you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost, so I'll do this too. Anybody that needs a baptism of the Holy Ghost, all I'm going to do is pray. And I'm going to ask God to fill you. Come here. In the name of Jesus, all right. The Holy Ghost is who gives you power. He's the one that directs you, okay? And all you do is receive it by faith. And then you, you, you let his, his spirit come into you, okay? And then you'll start speaking in tongues. You may not speak now. You may speak a little later, but you're going to get to heaven in the language. Did you give your life to Jesus Christ? Okay, you have. You're born again, right? Okay, so you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, right? Okay, raise your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I ask you to baptize him in your Holy Spirit, God. You're the baptizer. Fill him with your power and your presence and release that, and release that spiritual tongue, Father, for him right now. But baptize them in the Holy Ghost. We thank you and we praise you, God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Touch him, Lord, in Jesus' name. Touch him, touch him, touch him, touch him. And touch him. And what you do is you release you, the heavenly language that God gives you. Just, just. That's the spiritual language, okay? Just let it go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It's in God's hands now, brother. It's in God's hands, okay? In Jesus' name. He said, pray for them that need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's what you do. You do it, Father. What's up? Man? Yeah. Okay. Amen, amen. See? Okay. Let me just say what God tells me, and he'll add that on to you. And I've got a friend to here that I can introduce you to also that can help you with that. Okay. Hey, all right. Listen, it's God's glory, okay? You want to pray for him? I'll t go ahead. Pray for him right now. What's, what's up, Bishop? Thank you. Yeah, okay. Okay. Amen. Raise your hands, brother. You, Father, in the name of Jesus right now, he's repenting of his lifestyle and the things that he's did, God, and he's asking you for forgiveness. And Father, I know in Jesus' name right now, you forgive him right now for all of his sins. He wants to have his life and relationship back with you, and you give it, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise. God, touch him and anoint him. In the name of Jesus. 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 It's forgiven as far as the east is from the west. And God gives you the power and the strength to overcome what you're going through. In Jesus' name, you got the anointing. He comes when he needs to, and he anoints you right now to get through this and bring everything back together. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're all right, right? You're all right. Well, Amen. anybody else is here? Everybody born again? Everybody born again? Amen. Okay. He's, 
You should pray for him. Okay, we're going to let that go on. Okay. Okay. Well, let's, let's have a word of prayer tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you, Jesus, that you're coming again. The rapture is going to happen soon, God. We ask you, God, to use us in this end-time ministry, God, that you are going to expand and bless and do everything uh, as you do it. It'll, it'll expand and it, it will grow everything. All the needs will be met. All the people that we need for the, this ministry, God, you're going to set that up. You are doing that. We are doing that. And I thank you, Father, for it. Give us some more time, Lord. Give us some more time so we can get the word out and people can be born again like we are, that we're not dying. We're not on our way to hell. We got salvation. You're going to create a new heaven and earth. I know it sounds sometimes strange when people hear something like that, but that's what's written in the word, and that's the truth, Father. So I ask you to thank you for blessing us tonight. Keep us all safe tonight. Let your angels encamp around us. On the northeast, southwest, above and beneath, I plead the blood of Jesus over fam every family. And I thank you, God, for protecting us and blessing us and answering our prayers. Everything you do, God, in Jesus' name. Bless this church and this ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you.